Hello everybody, welcome back to another edition of the Modicon M. 2, 2, 1. I'm your host, Leandro Mada, and in this video we're going to talk about the PTO functionality that we have on the PLC. So let's go to the presentation. So the first thing that we need to know is what is PTO. PTO stands for Pulse Train Output. So if we compare this with the PWM, because when I was trying to find a way to explain this, I saw that uh, there was some confusion between PWM and PTO. So I tried to make this graph in order to explain it better. So let's go to the full view. So basically, as we see in PWM, just take this, D, and the PWM use a fast output. Okay, we have explained before and you have a uh, pulses coming up from the output of the controller but what is fixed is a period okay you can see here i try to make it equal but the period is fixed what is different is the duty cycle is the part where in the period the pulse is in true okay in one you can see here you have this duty cycle the cycle and here you can see it's much bigger okay that is the difference or this is what the PWM means so is pulse with the width modulation okay so the period is fixed and the only thing that is modified here is the duty cycle as we saw on the previous video on the PWM uh, we can change this uh, fixed period okay but before executing the pwm so you define your period that you want and then what you can change is the duty cycle so if we go now to the pto okay the pto what it does is to send uh, pulses uh, to the device that you want to control okay but what it change is the frequency of those pulses and if we change the frequency, it also changes the period, as you can see over here. If you take into account a period from here to here, to here to here, okay, this is a period, okay. The duty cycle in all of them is 50%. And if you take over here, over here, and over here, you can see, or you can see, almost see it, sorry for the drawing, is the 50%. So, what is different for the PWEM, as you can see it here in the graph, is that on the PWEM we have a fixed period, a fixed frequency, and the only thing that we modify is the duty cycle. On the PTO, the duty cycle okay, is fixed and is the 50%. And what we can change is the frequency that the pulses are going from the controller to the device that we want to control. So that's basically the idea. So if we continue with this. So knowing that, what we need in order to control a motor or a stepper is a driver. We cannot directly connect the poles of the PTO directly to the motor or stepper. Okay. So what we need is the driver. Just delete all this stuff. So one thing that we need to know when we use PTO is that if we connect the output of the controller, it just controls the driver, okay? But we don't have any feedback. So it's an open loop, this, okay? So for example, if we want to know the exact position, what we can do is to use an encoder. I'm going to do the pass input of the PLC in order to know the exact position or something that we want. That could be one solution. So we continue with this. The PTO that we have on the only on M to do one, it has two types of configurations, post direction, clockwise and counterclockwise. So now you may ask, okay, what is the difference? So I done this graph. So I hope this is going to be understood. So if we use the post direction, the M to do one requires a one fast digital output to create the high frequency pulses and then a normal output. This normal output will be in charge on define the direction. So here I just using a 
um, a fixed frequency, but this can vary it on time, okay? Just to have an idea. So imagine that you are sending the frequencies, as you can see over here. What is what is going to change the direction of the driver, okay, is the digital output. So if the digital output is in one, okay, the driver will understand that we need to go for, uh, in reverse. And if the digital output is in false, okay, in zero, in zero, this means that they need to go forward. So this is how this device that is over here is going to understand that they need to go forward or reverse, depends on the direction pose. Now, if we compare this to the clockwise counterclockwise, okay, you can see here in the graph that they have fast digital input, uh, digital output one and fast digital output two. So, depend on which fast output is sending the pulses, the, the driver, this one, okay, will understand that I need to go forward or reverse, okay? One disadvantage of this one is that, compared with this, is that uh, in here I need to use two digital outputs and this one one. So we are limited to the amount of video outputs that we have on the controller, so we need to pay attention on this. So once now, now we know the difference between PWM and PTO. So in Schneider Electric Offer, these are the devices that we have in order to use PTOs. So here you can see, uh, okay, I have the PTO of the controller, and now I need to send these pulses into the driver. You can see here, as driver, we have servo drives, Lexion 32M and C, okay? That allowed you to command these pulses, okay? This act as a driver and send those, the commands for forward reverse to the servo motor that we have here, BMH and BSH. Now, we also have another driver, which is the Lexon 28, that probably is more suitable for this one, okay? That's on cost, I believe it's gonna be a good solution. There you have the Servo Drive Lexon 28A, okay? Make sure of this. And then we have the BCH2 servo motor. If you're taking the catalog based on the drive, you can select the servo motor. So I believe this is one possibility in case you want to use the servo drive. And here, probably didn't mention that, but depend of the of the solution that we have, you probably have a closed loop over here. So the other solution, instead of using servo drives, is to use a stopper drive. So for the stopper drive, we have this SD2, 15, SD3, 15, and 28. This is this one, if I'm not wrong, and this one are these two over here. And then depend on which separate drive you have, the BRS2 and the BRS3, the stepper motor. So this can be another solution if you want to use PTO outputs and control an axis. Another solution that we also have is the integrated drive. So you can see in the graph, we have like a limitation between the driver and the motor stepper, motor or stepper, just delete this. So this one has all embedded, the driver and a stepper, all in one, and the motor, all in one. Okay, so this is one advantage in case you want to reduce the space. And then another solution using the variable speed drive, we have the, um, the Altivar machine, the ATB340, that allows you to receive uh, pulses, so you can command the motor that you have, okay? So this is like a rough idea of the difference So what we have seen today, um, what is PTO and the different way that we have uh, to communicate the PLC into a drive, into a driver, okay, in order to send the pulses in different ways of the pulses that we have. Um, I haven't touched anything on the software yet because I wanted to have an idea of what is PTO and how it can be used. So in the next video, what we're going to see is 
the different function blocks that we have in order to use the PTO and how we can configure them. So thank you very much for watching this video and I see you on the next one.